Okay, okay, I can't put it off any longer. Welcome to From Center Ice. My name is Courtney and I am here to talk about the Rockford Ice Hogs. Now, notice the shift in the last few videos about the piggies to my demeanor now. Usually, being able to talk about the Ice Hogs would make me super happy. I love my team, I love talking about them, but in this video, I have to wrap up their second round series against the Chicago Wolves. Hence, the change. I have been putting off doing this because I didn't want to think about it. I think I even started making those playoff round two night recaps just so I could keep putting off making this video. So at least something good came from it, I guess. But let's just get this over with. So the Rockford Ice Hogs entering the 2022 Calder Cup playoffs were in fourth place in the Central Division. Now the top three teams in the Central got a first round bye, so they did not have to play, that being the Chicago Wolves, first in the division, the Manitoba Moose, and the Milwaukee Admirals. Rockford being fourth and the Texas Stars being fifth, those two faced off against each other in the best of three series, the Rockford Ice Hogs sweeping it in two games. So many good feelings! Uh, Lucas Reichel opened the scoring in the playoffs for the Ice Hogs. He got the first goal of the game in game number one, and obviously the first goal for the Hogs. Isaac Phillips, my boy, had two game-winning primary assists. The first one on Carson Gusevich's game-winning goal in game number one, and the second one being on Dylan Mc McLaughlin's game-winning goal in game number two. That one coming in overtime, which made the game one to nothing. Arvid Soderblom got a shutout in game two. He saved 69 of 70 shots in round one. Where did it all go wrong? Because then we enter round two, and the Rockford Ice Hogs are up against their in-state rivals, their I-90 rivals, the Rosemont Wolves. I mean, the Chicago Wolves. Or so they say. Stop lying, Wolvesies! Anyway, I'm just bitter. The first two games of the series are at the Allstate Arena in Rosemont, Illinois, the home of the Chicago Wolves, because they were the first place in the Central Division, so they get the home ice advantage. And not only were they first in the Central, they were first in the West. And not only were they first in the West, they were the first place team in the American Hockey League. But during the regular season, the Ice Hogs had an 8-3-0-1 record against their biggest rival. So even though they won the AHL equivalent of the President's Trophy, the McGregor Kilpatrick Trophy, it seemed like maybe the Ice Hogs would at least have a fighting chance to make it a series. The Ice Hogs played very well down the final stretch of the regular season. Arvid Soderblom cemented his spot in the crease. The saying goes, win pig fly. And these piggies were flying until they weren't. So game number one in Rosemont. Lucas Reichel once again opens the scoring in a playoff series for the Rockford Ice Hogs. After a good defensive play, the Ice Hogs turn the puck over to themselves, otherwise known as a takeaway. But I wanted a positive spin on a turnover. So a turnover to themselves. Lucas Reichel gets the puck. He breaks in on Alex Lyon and shoots it past the Wolves goaltender won nothing Ice Hogs. And then everything exploded. The Chicago Wolves got two goals in the final one minute of the first period, so they went into the intermission two to one, but they were not done there. The Chicago Wolves, the Rosemont Wolves, added four more goals to put six on the board in game number one. Evan Barrett, bless his soul, got a goal back for the Ice Hogs in the third period, but they were just playing for pride at that point, and that's how the game ended, 6-2 to two in favor of the Wolves. The shots on goal for the game were 38-20 to 20 in favor of Chicago, so it didn't really end up too bad shot-wise, all things considered, for the Ice Hogs. They've certainly had worse. But the Piggies went 0 for 4 on the power play, while the Wolves went 2 for 7! Seven. 7 penalties. My boys got off on the wrong foot there in the opening game of the second round, and the other foothold must have just disappeared because they never got their footing and it was all downhill. Game number two, much like in game number one, the Wolves scored two goals in the first period, but this time the Ice Hogs did not open the scoring in the first period. In fact, they only got one shot on goal 
in the first period. That shot coming 14 minutes and one second into the first period. Meanwhile, the Wolves with three power plays in the first period outshot the Ice Hogs 20 to one. That's right. 20 to one. I tweeted that out while the game was happening and people thought it was a typo. And why wouldn't you? 20 to one in the first period. It is a miracle the game was only two to nothing. Thank you, Arvid Soderblom. Once again, the Wolves got as many shots on goal in the first period of game two as the Ice Hogs got in the entirety of game one. In the second period, the Wolves added another goal from Max Lejoie, but then on the power play, 13 minutes and 19 seconds into the second period, the Wolves clear the puck as they are killing the penalty. Arvid Soderblom stops up the puck, passes it off to his defenseman, Alec Regula, and Regula goes, I've got this! And he takes the puck from his own zone into the offensive zone, working his way through two defenders at the Wolves' blue line, and just snipes the puck past Alex Lyon. Three to one. That goal looked easy. How could they not do that before? Now, I say it looked easy because Alec Regula made an absolutely fantastic play. He dangled his way through those defensemen. He got Lyon to probably sort of freeze. He didn't make a big movement on the attempted save and then just used his great shot that he has to get it into the net. So he made it look easy, but the defending and the goaltending there certainly didn't look great. So where was that the entire rest of the time? Because that's how the game went into the second intermission, three to one. And then about 14 minutes into the third period, the Wolves add another one, four to one, and that is how this game ended. Now the Ice Hogs are perfectly capable of scoring goals and coming back in games. We saw it many times throughout the regular season that guys would just keep coming in clutch. They would claw their way back into games somehow. When you thought they were down and out, like maybe being down three to one going into the third period or then four to one about 14 minutes in, we've seen them overcome this. They are fully capable of doing it by pulling themselves together coming out, working hard, getting shots, getting goals, tying games, winning games. But in that third period, when the Ice Hogs needed any sort of life to come back in this game, and most likely in this series, the second round is only a best of five. So if the Wolves win this one, the series is two to nothing. They only have to win one more. But in that third period, when they should have been desperate for a goal. The Wolves outshot them 18 to five. This is the same game they were outshot in the first period, 20 to one. The shots on goal at the end of the game were 49 to 16. The Wolves got more shots in the first period alone and in the third period alone than the Ice Hogs had the entire game. What team showed up to this series? because that is not the Ice Hogs that I watched all season long and watched in the first round. Sure, the offense was a bit dried up there in the first round, but at least they were trying. Matthew Murray and Net for the Stars played fantastic. They come into the second round, they get 20 shots in game one, they get 16 shots in game two. You're not going to win like that with the shot volume that you give up. Granted, obviously credit here has to go to the Chicago Wolves and their their defenseman and Alex Lyon for stopping the pucks that he did face. I'm not taking any of that away from them. They were the best team in the league. Obviously, they know what they're doing. But the Hogs just came in to game one and rolled over and died. But hey, at least they scored a power play goal in game two. They went one for four on the power play, but they killed all three penalties that they took. Chicago went zero for three, and taking three penalties is much better than taking seven penalties like you did in game one, but how did you get outshot 20 to one and then 18 to five? That game number two was on the same night as the Maple Leafs and Tampa Bay Lightning game seven. So if you have happened to watch my round two recap videos, there have been two nights so far in round two. So there have been two videos. I'm covering both games on said nights. Maybe you can see why it looks like I might have been having more fun making those because my teams were not in them and my teams 
when it really came down to it, did a great job of stressing me out and then just not winning. But there was still one more game. Sunday, the day after game two, the day after game seven for the Leafs, back in Rockford, the Ice Hogs come home to face the Wolves in a do or die game three. And I was very much debating the night before whether I wanted to go to that game or not, but I did. And I will get to why after I recap it. So the Hogs and the Wolves hit the ice at the BMO Harris Bank Center. The Hogs coming home. They've been pretty good at home. They tend to feed off the crowd and I gotta give it to the Rockford faithful. They did a very good job of packing the BMO. Even in round number one. It started on a Wednesday night. The place was rocking. So game three, do or die, it was rocking again. The Ice Hogs fans came out to try to will their boys to a win. But two minutes and 27 seconds into the first period, Ivan Lodnia puts the Wolves on the board one to nothing. Assisted by Spencer Smallman and former Blackhawk Richard Ponick. And that's how the first period ended. But hey, the Ice Hogs were only outshot 16 to 6 this time. It's a lot better than 20 to 1. And then there wasn't a whole lot going on in the second period. This game was kind of boring, but also really anxiety inducing because, you know, do or die. Oh, and I can't forget to mention the Ice Hogs had three power plays in the first period. Remember, I said they ended the first with six shots on goal. This is a do or die game. You get three power play opportunities in the first period. The Wolves scored early. All you had to do was get one to tie it up and you managed six shots on goal. Wasn't feeling real good about the rest of the game. Second period, also kind of boring, but the Ice Hogs actually outshot the Wolves 14 to nine in the second period. Good job. But they were outscored one to nothing as CJ Smith put the second goal on the board for the Wolves 16 minutes and 15 57 seconds into the middle frame. So once again, down two goals, heading into the third period of a do or die game. And one minute and 12 seconds into the third period on the power play, Jack Drury puts another one on the board for the Wolves. Three to nothing. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I thought we were done. But the Ice Hogs hadn't been shut out all playoffs long so far, all four and a half games. And they wouldn't be again because 12 minutes and 57 seconds into the third period, while on the power play, once again, the Wolves clear the puck. Arvid Soderbloom stops up the puck, hands it off to his defenseman, Wyatt Kalnick this time, who then finds Ian Mitchell with the pass. He skates it into the offensive zone down the right wing side, looks around, sees his options, no one's open. He's gonna take it to the net himself. So he walks up on Alex Lyon and I don't really know what Lyon was doing on this goal. I guess he thought that Ian Mitchell was going to shoot low or maybe try to deke him out of his net as he has done with many a goaltender this season so far. Ian Mitchell, as a defenseman, may be one of the best shootout guys on the team and may have the best hands on the Rock for Ice Hawks, outside of maybe Lucas Reichel. That kid showed off a lot of talent this year that we didn't really know that he had necessarily. But anyway, Alex Lyon definitely misread whatever Mitchell was going to do because he was crouched so low in his net that Ian Mitchell just walked in on him and sniped it over his shoulder. I have to get a screen grab of this because he was just so low in his net. Look at this. The whole top of the net is open for Ian Mitchell and he hits it because he's pretty good. So that made the game three to one. It gave the home crowd something to cheer about. But with just over three minutes to go in the game, Andrew Podorowski, the leading scorer in the American Hockey League this season on the power play, puts the Wolves up four to one, and that would be the game. And the Ice Hogs were swept. They swept Texas in round number one, then they got swept in round number two by the Chicago Wolves. And that one hurt. Because this season was pretty good for the Rockford Ice Hogs. I would say compared to expectations, this season may have been great for the Rockford Ice Hogs. They started off slow, but then Jeremy Colleton was fired in Chicago. Derek King went up to the Blackhawks. Anders Sorensen took over as the interim head coach. Peter Aubrey, the goaltending coach, took over as the assistant. And those guys went 
to work. It is no secret here on From Center Ice that I was beyond ecstatic when Derek King got moved up to the Blackhawks because I wanted him nowhere near the Ice Hogs because I have suffered enough, my friends. And the transformation that this Ice Hogs team made this season, I feel does a good job of proving me right because this was a completely different team. Of course, it was different than last year, even though there were a lot of returning guys, but most of them were rookies last season. So their first professional year under their belt, they can go into the summer kind of knowing what it's going to take to have some success at the pro level, have a training camp. They were bound to make some strides. Then they started off slow and it was like, oh, here we go again. It's going to be another rough season. We're gonna have to pick and choose the positives to see which prospects take some jumps. But then the Rockford Ice Hogs turned into a team that just never quit on a game, which was really why this second round against the Wolves was so shocking. It was really a shock to the system because that's not the team that we have seen. They had a very rough month leading into the playoffs. They did very well, but they played something like 15 games in 30 days, which for the American League is absurd. I thought they would be able to get some rest coming into this round because there were a few days in between, but maybe they were just exhausted. They're still kids, most of them at least. And that Wolves team is a well-oiled machine. They are the best in the American League for a reason. I think it's Coach Ryan Warsawski's second year behind the bench for the Wolves. He did a fantastic job with them last season when they were the two-headed monster of the Chicago Wolves and Milwaukee Admirals. Since the Admirals organization didn't play in the shortened season, Nashville decided they would do a temporary affiliation with the Wolves. They sent their prospects there. But it was also the first year of the Carolina Hurricanes being affiliated with the Wolves. So it was a brand new team in general. General. And they were at the top of the league. Thought maybe with half of the team leaving, with the Admirals coming back into the American League this season, and a lot of their point leaders last year were players who would have been on the Milwaukee Admirals. I thought there would be a drop off in their play, but they got better. It helps when you bring in Andrew Podorowski as your captain, and he scores over a hundred points for the first time in a decade in the AHL. But that is a good team. They are very well coached. As much as I smack talk them and I really do enjoy the rivalry with the Chicago Wolves. It is a fun rivalry. They do a lot of things right over there and I have to give them credit where credit is due. As much as it also hurts me to do that, I come from a huge place of bias on this channel, but I make that very well known. I am a fan of my teams. But more than that, I am a fan of the game of hockey. And if I'm not being fair to a great opponent, then what are we even doing here? The Ice Hogs were not the better team coming into this series. But again, I thought maybe they would have a fighting chance with how they played against the Wolves during the regular season. They were always going to be the underdog. It's not a huge surprise that they did get swept. But like I said, it hurts because this was a special group of players. Thankfully, most of them should be coming back next season, but there's always going to be some changes made and they're going to sting because this group was special. They were fun to watch. They were never out of a game. Lucas Reichel's first year over here playing for the Ice Hogs and getting some games with the Black Hawks, he was fun to watch. Ian Mitchell taking steps in his game. Isaac Phillips taking huge steps in his game. Those two becoming a solid number one defensive unit. Arvid Soderblom, his first year with the team coming over and just taking over the net. There was a lot going on with the Black Hawks organization this season. From trying to cope with the news about Kyle Beach and trying to reconcile being a fan of the Blackhawks while knowing all of this happened. If I told you there were no moments where I wanted to give up on the team and the franchise, I would just plainly be lying to you. But then we had the Ice Hogs and they gave me something to be excited about, something to look forward to in the game of hockey whenever there was an Ice Hogs game on that night. Because I knew they would at least put in a 
full effort, this team full of hardworking and skilled kids. I knew that they would either make an incredible play for a goal, Arvid Soderbloom or Colin Delia or Kale Morris would be making a great save in net. Our young defensemen would be really honing their defensive game and making great defensive plays. Isaac Phillips, my corner guard, you shall not pass. You want to know why I talk about him so much? Yeah, because I do truly think he is the best defenseman on the Rockford Icehogs at 20 years old. But he is so fun to watch. He makes smart plays. He can win board battles. He clears the puck out to the neutral zone effortlessly with great stretch passes, or he'll just skate it out himself. And if the other team doesn't watch out, he'll take that puck all the way to the net. He did a great job of helping out his goaltenders. And then when he is just sick of an opposing player and he's done with them, he just shoves them over and skates away. And it is so fun to watch every single time. And if there is one thing as Blackhawk fans that we needed this season, it was fun. And so I wanted to let you guys know that there is fun coming. There is fun that you can watch now with the Rockford Icehawks. It's not always easy to watch an AHL game, but there is AHL TV. It's a subscription service, so you have to pay for it, but it is so worth it. You got Joey Z on the call doing it all himself, and there's never a boring moment during the broadcast. We have a fun team. We have a top-notch broadcaster. This is a future of the Chicago Blackhawks, and just when they're entering a rebuild, these are the kids you're gonna want to get to know. This Hogs team provided so many good moments, so many fun moments when there were the darkest of days throughout this season. They put a smile on my face night in and night out. Yeah, because I was born and raised here in Rockford. They are my hometown team, so maybe it means a little more to me. But these kids are good. They are fun, and there's a very good chance that a lot of them could be impactful players in the NHL. The Ice Hogs had a slogan a few years ago, it all starts here. But it is so true with the frustrating season that the Black Hawks had on the ice. This Ice Hogs team gave me hope for the future, made me smile, made me cheer for my team. So seeing this season come to an end was really, really hard. And now I'm gonna get emotional talking about my piggies. I just love my boys so much. I am so thankful for them being here in Rockford. I am so thankful for the Black Hawks investing in this team and investing to keep them in Rockford. I am thankful to Kyle Davidson for being patient with our prospects now, letting them play down here, letting them get some chemistry with each other, letting them get some meaningful minutes, meaningful games, and giving us something fun to watch in the process. I am thankful for Danny Wirtz and the whole team up in Chicago who really seem like they are trying to make this organization better on the ice, but more importantly, off the ice. And that little shiny, shimmery bit of hope that was impossible to find all throughout last summer and maybe throughout the beginning of this season. It started shining brighter and brighter the longer the Ice Hogs kept playing. And just because they're out now does not mean that that light is gone. There is hope for the future of this franchise. There are some fun prospects coming up guys who work their tails off. Anders Sorensen, Peter Aubrey, Jared Nightingale, once again, that coaching staff that has the interim tag on them, I hope that interim tag is removed. Because they also gave me hope for what this franchise can look like. And that is why I went to game three. Because even though I knew it was going to suck so bad to see them lose if they did come out and lose game three, especially after the Leafs had lost game seven the night before, the Ice Hogs had lost game two the night before heading into this one, I was all full of emotions. But after tweeting out, I don't know if I can go to the Ice Hogs game tomorrow, I really sat back I said, Courtney, what are you doing? This team, these players, that staff, they gave you hope in a season where it didn't seem like hope was possible. They made you smile and laugh and cheer and get excited in the most difficult season that you have had as a hockey fan. You are so beyond proud of these kids for how they played this year. The least you can do is show up for them 
and cheer them on even if they lose. And as soon as those thoughts went through my head, it was obvious. I was going to game three, win or lose. I was so proud of this team. I was going to be there cheering for them, letting my players know that I am so proud of them. I am so thankful for them and I cannot wait for next season. So guys, I'm going to end this one here. That's going to be it from me. If you want to hear more from me or from Center Ice, you can head on over to fromcenterice.com. There's links to all the places you can find us over there. If you aren't subscribed yet to this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. Hit like on this video because that would make me happy. And with my piggies done, I need some more happiness. If you would like to follow along on social media, all of the links to those platforms are down in the description for you. But on Twitter, it is at VF Center Ice Pod. You can catch my snarky live tweets of games and any other hockey madness going on. On Instagram, I'm trying to be a bit more active, and that is at From Center Ice Pod. So, all of that being said, thank you guys so very much for tuning into this video. Thank you for following along throughout the season. The piggies may be done, but there will be playoff videos for at least round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. We'll see where it goes from there. And you have the happy hours on Friday, the cozy cast on Monday. I'll be around. But Blackhawks fans, Ice Hogs fans, the kids are all right. Bye guys.